How are we doing, everybody? Thank you guys so much for watching this first video from our study through the Minor Prophets. You may be wondering why are we studying through the Minor Prophets, or you may even be asking who or what are the Minor Prophets. It's one of my favorite sections in Scripture, these 12 books at the end of the Old Testament. And just to better understand why we are covering this and what they talk about, let's just back up a little bit. God chose to speak to his people. He chose to reveal himself. You go back to Genesis chapter 1, God was in the garden with his creation, Genesis 1 and chapter 2 as well. And he spent time with his people. He chose to create these people, to spend in a relationship with him. You know, in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam and Eve, because of their sin, now God was distant from them. Now God was not, no, no longer approachable because of his holiness and their disobedience and their sinful condition. But God still chose to speak to his people. He still wanted to communicate who he was, so he did that through a couple different ways. He would reveal himself by things that are made, which Romans chapter 1 says. He reveals himself by his nature. You look at Psalms 8 and Psalm 19, that the heavens declare the glory of God. He's revealing himself by the way he has made our universe, by the way he's made you and me. And then throughout the Old Testament, you'll see God appearing to people. He spoke to Moses in a burning bush. He, he led the people of God throughout the wilderness by a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. God wanted to reveal himself to his people. And God chose the nation of Israel back in when he made a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham, he's like, you're going to be the father of a great nation. And through that nation, through your lineage, the entire world will be blessed. God's desire for his people was that they would be a light to the world, that they would reveal what he has revealed to them, that they would reveal his character, they would reveal his glory and his honor. And God chose to reveal himself to his people and chose to reveal himself to the world by his people. But you and I both know a quick study of the Old Testament. The people of God, Israel, constantly was not revealing to the world who God was, but ultimately who they were. They were a sinful and wretched and messed up people who constantly forgot what all God had done for them. They would forget that God led them out of Egypt. They would forget that God led them across the sea. They would forget that God led them through the wilderness, that they provided the, the, the promised land to them. Constantly, they would forget the blessings and the honor of God. And God chose to raise up people who would speak to them, who would lead them. And we see in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that God desired to raise up a prophet. That prophet would be declared by God. That prophet would be one of their own countrymen. And that prophet would speak to them words from God. That would be God's vessel to communicate to the people. A lot of times when we think about prophets, we think about how they only think about doom and gloom. The things that are coming. Condemnation coming. Judgment that's coming. And while yes, that's true, every prophet can be broken down into four categories of their messages. One would be condemnation. Second would be judgment. Third, instruction. And finally, the fourth would be a message of hope. So yes, they brought condemnation on the people of God. Constantly they would come to the people of God or even the enemies of God and, and just preach condemnation to point out how they were living lives contrary to the promises of God, contrary to the blessings of God. They'd also preach judgment. Hey, you're living this life. God is going to bring judgment down on you. Judgment's coming, and you need to repent. And that was ultimately what the message was, a message to turn and repent, to turn back to God. And that's where the instruction comes in. They would, he would call, the prophets would call these people to live lives of holiness, the holiness that God desires his people to live. We can see that back in Leviticus, that God's holy. He wants his people to be holy. And then last, he would, the prophet would preach a message of hope. All the messages from the prophets point forward to a, to a greater day, a greater Messiah, a greater person, a greater hope, and ultimately see the fulfillment of that in Jesus. All those messages from the prophets pointed forward to a greater covenant, a greater blessing, a greater promise, a greater future, a greater leader in the person of Jesus. And throughout the Old Testament, you can see upwards of maybe 100 prophets, and we are blessed to have 16 of them write their stories down, write their messages down that we can see in Scripture today. They're divided up into two categories. There's the major prophets, which is Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Ezekiel, and Daniel. And Jeremiah wrote the book, Jeremiah, but also Lamentations. So we see just four of them, four prophets writing these major, and they call them major prophets because it's the brevity and the length of their, of their text. 
They are so much larger and so much bigger in, in, in written scale than the minor prophets. And the minor prophets are 12 other prophets. They're not minor in significance. They're not minor in relevance. They're just smaller length, smaller in story. And they are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. From Isaiah to Malachi, the, all those 16 prophets, that spans over a course of 400 years. 400 years of preaching, condemnation, judgment, instruction, and hope. And the, the, all 16 of them pointed towards this greater mercy, this greater love, this greater Messiah, and that's where we see Jesus come into play. And so often, though, what we end up doing is that we skip over those other 12, those minor prophets. And you may know some of them. You may, you know, remember back to the days of VeggieTales, you know the story of Jonah because of Jonah and the great fish, and you remember that story. But you may not know the rest of the stories in these, of, the, of, the, of these 12 minor prophets because so often we just glance over them because we think they're irrelevant or we think they're just not, not supportive. We don't know. But they play a huge part in communicating the story of God, who he is, the story of us, who we are, and the story of Jesus. And Jesus a lot will, will reference back to these minor prophets and show how the message of God is started in the beginning, has been this beautiful thread written throughout the Old Testament through the major prophets, the minor prophets, the kings, the judges, all the way up until his coming and also in, on into eternity. So over the next several weeks, we're going to study these, study these as slowly as we can. Now, some of these are a little bit longer than others. We're not going to spend too long on all of them. And we're going to break them down to show you just how these messages for the people of God 2,500 years ago are still applicable to us today and how they paint a bigger picture than just those few verses and how they point ultimately to Jesus. And when you read these, it's very important that you understand them in their context because in all reality, those, those last 12 books of the Bible, those 12 books of the Old Testament, excuse me, those minor prophets are actually not in chronological order. But what you can do, you can go into the book of First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, the stories of the kings that came and led in the line of David. And one, when one book is written for the northern kingdom, one book's written in the southern kingdom. Because remember, after the reign of Solomon, the kingdom of God split. The kingdom of Israel, excuse me, split. Ten tribes went north, two tribes went south. And they had two different kings. But during that time period, these prophets would come in and speak judgment to the king, speak judgment to the pe people, speak instruction, speak hope. And you can find their stories of these prophets throughout those letters of 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles. And it's important that we, what we, what we will do, it's important that we'll go back and see how they play a part in that story because the context explains everything. You see, because also remember that the people of God in Israel were brought into exile. They were captured by Babylon and brought into exile. And some of these prophets spoke to a specific audience in a specific time period. Some of them spoke to people outside of Israel. Some, like Jonah, spoke to the city of Nineveh, as did Nahum. And Obadiah spoke to the nation of Edom. But also, some spoke before the exile, some spoke during the exile, and some spoke after the exile. And that's really important to consider in the full context of the entire story. Because it helps better understand what the people were facing. Why were they facing this condemnation? Why were they facing this judgment? What hope could they actually have? So for the next several weeks, we're going to break down these 12 books. And I encourage you, each time we come together with a video, that you spend time reading. We'll let you know each day which section we are covering, and we encourage you after the video just to dive further into it. So grab uh, your Bible, grab a study Bible, grab your iPad, whatever it is that you use to study God's Word. Grab a cup of coffee, that's all I'll be doing with you, and spend time dwelling in the Word of God, listening to Him, and ultimately we'll come together, we'll see how God is presented in the story, what God is trying to present the people of God in the story, what is, he, what is He trying to present us in this story, and ultimately how does this, this story, this text, point to the greater picture of the message of Jesus. Because the entirety of Scripture is all about Jesus. God wants to reveal Himself to you. God wants to reveal Himself to His people. That's why He chose to make Himself present in our lives by sending Jesus, the Word made flesh, who made His dwelling among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son. And today, 
He still wants to speak to you. God is still speaking. He spoke the world into existence, and he still speaks to you and to me. Maybe join together over these next several weeks and just listen and meditate on God's word as we study these books. Yes, they were written 2,500 years ago with a message of hope, the message of instruction, the message of judgment, the message of condemnation. You may find is still very applicable to you. And God may choose to use one of these books, one of these videos to speak to you. So join us these next several weeks. Join us as we wrap, as we, as we spend time together in this study. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for this study. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day today. Father God, we just gather here together through this, this avenue of technology. We say thank you for the work that you've been doing in our church. Over these last several months, as you've guided us, you've protected us, you've given us the ability to come into people's living rooms, to come to people's devices, to speak your truth to them. God, thank you for this opportunity that we have over these next several weeks just to dive into some amazing text that point to you, that point to your son, and that point to our final deliverance and our final hope because of the, the blood of Jesus Christ. God, bless this study. Bless every ear and every heart that hears your word. And may we all come to a better understanding of who you are because of this word. God, reveal yourself to us in a mighty way, in a way that only you can. Your sons, let me pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day today. We'll see you tomorrow, and we'll begin studying the book of Hosea.